Hi everyone and welcome to my review of Yasujiro Ozu's Tokyo Twilight in 1957. Um, so here we are, you know, this time the DVD and this is the melodrama set. I opened it today and uh, yeah, of course it comes Tokyo Twilight, um, Woman of Tokyo and Early Spring, um, you know, which I'm also looking forward to massively early spring. Um, this is a three disc set, uh, two disc set, sorry, of, of two films um, and basically, yes, um, it was pretty cheap, you know, considering it's, it's three Ozu films um, and, you know, they're, they're pretty rare Ozu, uh, you could say, and um, yeah, I, I think at some point maybe I'll get the Blu-rays, um, but not for now. And for now, I'll stick with this and uh, I watched uh, Tokyo Twilight today and um, this is a film um, that I was looking forward to massively, um, you know, as you probably know in my other reviews or just general comments on the channel, yeah, I've been looking forward to it massively. Um, I knew I knew the cast, um, Setsuka Hara again, um, one of my favourite act actresses of all time. Um, she's in six Ozu films. Um, you know, there's, there's only one other Ozu now that I've not seen that she's in. Um, Trishy Rai is in this film as the father. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, Haruko Sugimura, um, she's great in um, every Ozu film um, and she's really good in this as well. Um, yeah, so I was looking forward to it. Um, what I'd heard of this film, um, and I, as always, never look into the plot because I don't like to be, you know, get it spoiled and stuff. And um, Yes, um, you know, I'd heard it's meant to be one of the darkest, if not the darkest, you know, Ozu film. Um, up until this point, I the probably the darkest I'd seen, um, you know, in places, of course, Tokyo Story, um, but uh, A Hen in the Wind, you could say, um, yeah, that sounds about right, Hen in the Wind, um, consistently is probably the darkest Ozu film, um, and, you know, that I'd seen, um, Floating Wheeze, it's more, it's not quite as warm, maybe you could say, um, not that it's necessarily more dark, um, but yes, um, this film, you know, so, so what, you know, I thought, you know, Ozu films, um, you know, there's not really a pattern, you know, with the ones I like the most. Um, but, you know, I thought, you know, most Ozu films, you know, they have got a lightness to them in, in places. If this is wholly dark and, you know, it's depressing, it might not be one of my favourites. Um, and yes, you know, I watched it, but I did, I, of course, I did think, you know, it could be a great one. Um, it could be one of the best. This is very, very acclaimed, and, um, you know, most people would say, it's one of his best films, um, definitely. You know, it's not not quite as seen, you know, as as, as much as um, you know a lot of the other ones. Even you know the ones that aren't quite as acclaimed. Uh, say Good Morning um, it was very very well seen that one. Um, but yes, you know, I watched it tonight, and you know, I, th I think you know, Ozu is in my top ten directors. You know, so by this point, you know, I'd seen I'd seen thirteen great ones. Um, I saw Mother Should Be Loved, Incomplete. Um, that was good. Near Enough is very good. Um, so all the Ozus I've seen, I've really liked at least. Pretty much all of them I've loved. Um, 13 are on my favourite films list. He's in my top 10 directors, you know, the best Japanese director of all time for me. But for me, this was disappointing, I have to say it now. And there's no point beating around the bush, um, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, I'm not, of course, I, I, it was disappointing, but once again, you know, I, I'm, I'm not too too bothered because by this point, Ozu, you know, has exceeded what you know I thought he would ever give me, you know, he's given me countless great film after great film, you know. And yes, sorry about that, um, but yes, eight of them films have been masterpieces for me, um, and you know, there's been quite a few of these Ozu's that I've seen that, um, you know, that are not talked about too much, uh, not well regarded, and I've loved them, um, you know, and it's just the case of, and this one I didn't quite connect to as much. Um, it's basically what I, I thought it could, could, could be for me, you know, kind of uh, in terms of my connection with it, um, and, you know, I think, um, I think it's it's probably the one that I connected to the least overall. Um, even a mother should be loved. You know, I did. You know, I did prefer that. Um, even in incomplete form. Um, but yes, I think I did like it. There's, don't get me wrong. I did like the film. I think it's a good film. Um, decent film. Well made. Um, the acting. You know, from from some of the, the cast. <coughs> Setsuka Hara. Um, you know, of course, uh, Chishi Ryo and Haruko uh, Sugimura. Um, they're all. Of course, um, very good in this film, and actually, the you know um, bump it up from being an average film to me. I have a lot of problems with the film. Um, you know, this is you know my reviews are just my thoughts. You know, they're not um, saying that this film is this. You know, it's just what I think of the film, <laughs> because a lot a lot of people would would say, um, you know, that uh, what does the lady forget is a great film, and, and not a lot of people you know would say um, late autumn is one of the five best Ozu's, but you know, so everyone's different kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you know this this film. Um, I have a lot of problems. Now the opening scene, I was thought, I thought, you know, great. You know, this has really hooked me. You know, um, 
lovely scenes here, very peaceful. Really me in uh, gradually. Chishi Rai, of course, um, and uh, who plays um, Tsukuchi. Um, he's basically the father of these two <coughs> daughters. And basically, um, these two daughters, Akiko and um, Takako, uh, they basically, you know, the, the, their mother has, you know, left them, you know, when they were younger. And, you know, they believed her to be dead. Um, and turns out, you know, you learn quite quite quickly, um, you could say, um, not too quickly maybe, but um, it does develop, certainly in the background, um, that she's not dead. And um, she basically comes to see them. Um, and Chishi Rai, you've got all the things going on with him, you know, and he, <coughs> it, you know, affects him. And then things happen in the second half of the film, um, which take a dark turn again. And yes, that's basically the story, you know, the, these two daughters um, coming into contact with their mother um, that they've not seen for years, you know, and they, they you know, don't really remember her too much. Um, and yeah, um, basically, you know, the opening scene, um, you know, it had me intrigued, um, very much so, and um, it was very, very warm. And then, of course, Haruko Sugimura's character, um, she basically plays the auntie, the sister of uh, Chishu Rai's character, um, Sakuchi, and um, basically, the scene with her and Chishu Rai was very, very good. Um, once again, I really loved this this scene. Um, after that, you know, once um, you know the film goes on, um, I just I didn't quite connect to it as much. Um, I didn't think it was as compelling, um, really, <coughs> as any of his other works. Um, now the characters, um, you know, the younger sister um, of Akiko, um, basically, she's not a great character for me. Um, I wasn't really that interested in her. You know, I wasn't that. Wasn't that compelling? Um, I found the performance to be, yeah, it, it was fine. Um, a bit one note, you know, and, and the character, there was a lot of moping about in this film um, from her character, and um, I just didn't, I felt it was a bit forced actually, um, you know, and that's not something that I say about Ozu. This felt more like a, a Mizuguchi film um, to me. It didn't really feel much like an Ozu film, and, uh, and that's just my thoughts on the film, um, you know, and, and the moping about, you know. You know, it, it wasn't that enjoyable um, with her character. Um, she was just very, very one note for me. Um, a bit a bit annoying, actually, at times, um, when she's slapping people and everything. I just didn't root for her at all in the film. Um, so Sukahara, of course, plays the, the elder sister in the film, and um, she's much better. Um, you know, it kind of made me think, um, I just, maybe, you know, maybe she should have been the main character, more the main character uh, of the film. Um, but yes, basically, um, it mainly fo focuses on this, a Kiko character, and um, yeah, she's just not that interesting um, for me, and and not a great uh, you know protagonist. And another thing to note, um, really for me, is is once the you know the film after the twenty minute mark, really, um, it starts to introduce um, some more characters. Um, now these are you know a lot of you know just kind of random people. Um, now there is those films where it has a lot of characters, um, but again, perfectly balances it all out, and they're all interesting, and they all serve a purpose. Um, I felt in this film there was a lot of just random people who, a lot of card playing um, in this game, in this film, sorry, and um, you know, a lot of scenes where they play card games, they do, do other sort of games as well, um, you know, kind of smoking in the, in the, in the places, and um, I didn't like these scenes really, actually, unfortunately. Um, you know, Kiko, she was usually going there to find out info, you know, and um, she knew some of the people, but for me, they felt very, very flat, um, these scenes, um, by those two standards. Um, I just didn't quite feel that they were necessary you know I, I think actually that, you know I, I would be happy if they weren't in the, the film really I didn't think even they, they advanced anything um, they were just they were quite uninteresting for me you know, I just felt there was a lot of them you know and they just I just didn't really care for them too much you know, that's what it was. I didn't care for them um, like I did you know early on for the, for the main plot you know these I wanted to just go back to the focus of, of these um these main characters and you know, in the second half it did, you know, but um, it had more issues in the second half. Um, but basically, yes, um, it felt um, very, very um, flat at times, um, you know, I think. The characters, you know, I think, um, nowhere near as good as the rest of, you know, Ozu film characters. Um, Setsukahara was very good in the film. Chishu Rai was very, very good. Um, and Haruko Sugimura, you know, very good as well. But that's about it, There's, you know, and the cinematography. Um, I think the cinematography at times is, is great, as always, really, with Ozu. And that's the one thing you can count on him, um, really. Um, not as good as the rest of his films, and I think, actually, it was a bit too dark. Uh, the cinematography, of course, uh, it's meant to be a dark film, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but, yeah, you know, I think um, there's not much else, really, to, to massively praise. I think there were some very nice moments in the script, and uh, Senji Ito does a really good score. 
but again, we'll get to that. In fact, let's get to that first. Um, now, the score to this film, um, at times it is, it is quite, um, you know, emotional. Um, but, now, you know, here's, a, here's a baffling film for me. And, you know, this kind of ties into the fact that this is meant to be, you know, the darkest Ozu film, the most affecting, devastating Ozu film. You know, the score, at times in the score, it's got these upbeat, jolly moments. Um, it's very reminiscent of late autumn, you know, at times. You know, for example, when they, they take the trip um, and the music plays, um, it's more, it's very much um, a jolly kind of um, upbeat kind of um, music. And, um, you know, this music, um, it plays, uh, you know, in certain scenes in the film, um, which are meant to be very, very, you know, um, affecting, um, emotional scenes, you know, big revelations, you know, here, um, including a certain death in the film. Um, and then you've got this upbeat music in the background. Um, you know, maybe you know, my ears deceived me, I don't know, but this is what, you know, it was happening, it was playing uh, in the background, you know, this this um, kind of the, the part of the score which was more upbeat and um, it's playing in these, you know, dark, dark scenes, meant to be anyway, and um, I was I was pretty shocked, I, mean, I didn't think, I just didn't see, you know, this was very baffling to me personally, um, and it just took away from the experience, it, you know, lessened the impact, and um, it seemed, you know, I, I, I couldn't quite, you know, believe it actually, um, you know, I'm not being, you know, I'm trying not to be harsh on this, but really, um, I didn't quite get why this was playing, you know, in the background, um, it, was, it was very, very baffling to me, and it just took away from the, you know, the emotions, um, and usually, you know, Ozzy films have, you know, certain moments in the score, you know, that, that kind of um, played in different scenes, you know, the Noriko trilogy, early summer works, sort of, you know, and late autumn even, um, where it really, really elevates, you know, the emotions of the scene, the dialogue, the acting. Here it was, I felt it was very misjudged, um, actually, and um, just didn't didn't make any sense to me, to my brain. But yes, um, basically, um, another thing is, this is meant to be the most devastating Ozu. Um, it just isn't for me, um, I think. It feels it feels very much like an art film, um, you know. Now the, the term art film, you know, it, it can be used for many many different films. Uh, Tokyo Story, you know, is called an art film. I don't really feel it is, you know. I don't feel like really any of those two films are, you know, maybe floating weeds a bit more so. But again, that's a bit more Mizuguchi, and, and Mizuguchi, I, I suppose, I could see. For me personally, feels more like an art director. Nothing wrong with that um, per se, but um, this film. It feels like the most art film of an Ozu of the Ozu filmography, and um, for good and bad, you know, I think the framing and all this kind of stuff is wonderful. Um, you know, the atmosphere in the frames, you know, and, and the actual staging, cinematography definitely achieves something here, dark and everything visually. Um, a bit too overdone for me, <laughs> but yes, um, basically, um, you know, I, I don't think this is the darkest Ozu, and certainly not the um, <laughs> most affecting um, by no means, and. Um, the other thing, of course, you know, the other little things that, that plays into that is the fact I wasn't as invested in this one, um, so I wasn't as affected by the events, you know, and um, the fact is you've, I've got, you've got really a couple of um, moments that kind of made me feel like I was off, off character, um, you know, and the fact that the jolly music was playing, you know, in, in big, big scenes, you know, they were meant to be very, very maybe subtle and, um, you know, affecting, um, lessened the impact of that. I don't think this is the most affecting Ozu. Um, Far from it, you know, and um, I was invested in all the other Ozu's more than this. Um, this doesn't personally, to me, really feel like an Ozu film at all, and um, maybe it's just an exception. Um, hopefully so, but I didn't, I didn't care about this that much. Um, I feel it's very much um, actually nearly fluttering into the average mark. But for me, you know, Chishirai, um, the cinematography, the great, great cinematography overall, and uh, Sisukara, um although you know, not not my favourite character that she plays, definitely not. Um, they saved the film a little bit, and it is, it's is—it's still a good film, I think, um, you know, uh, all of it. Flaws I have with the film, I still think it's a good film, you know, and um, I think it has some, some really one great thing is, is the cinematography, and uh, some other parts were very good, you know, some of the conversations, um, even in the second half, I liked, I liked the, the bit with the you know, family, Sesuka is, um, you know, the character she plays, um, her child, uh, that was very, very warm and human, it has some human moments, um, but by Ozu standards, um, for me personally, it doesn't feel, you know, like what he's used to. Um, it's nowhere near for me personally as, you know, the standards really of the, any of his other films. Um, and, you know, even A Mother Should Be Loved, um, incomplete, you know, it was you know, definitely a lot better than this, I think, um, actually, you know, considerably better. Um, and I just, yeah, I just think um, some scenes could have 
been cut out actually um, because they, I, I just didn't like them personally, I didn't care for them. I don't personally think they advanced the plot at all. Um, the narrative um, and just some of these, especially the card scenes and everything, just, you know, and then when the mother comes into the film, um, it's a good hour really before she, you know, kind of really comes into contact with them and actually, you know, you start to see things advancing. Um, even there, it's a bit disappointing um, considering how much she was built up um, and it just feels a bit, a bit flat, this film. Uh, for me, you know, I think a bit underwhelming, um, you know, it just, I don't think it really, um, it really moved me that much at all. Um, and, and, you know, it, it does have its human moments, you know, its touching moments, um, but it doesn't really elevate me um, that much. It doesn't, I didn't really get invested in this film. A little bit, yeah, you know, and certain scenes I, I did really like. Um, again, this, the script is solid. It's got some really nice moments in the script, actually. Um, overall, as a film, because of all its flaws and the fact that it was just, you know, at times, very underwhelming. Um, and the fact that, you know, I didn't really connect with some of these characters at all, um, I think, you know, there's a lot moping about, um, a bit too much crying in this film, and, you know, crying in the film does not make it necessarily, you know, more powerful, um, you know, this, I think this lack, lacks the subtlety, actually, a lot of Ozu films, um, just look at the ending of Late Spring, look at the ending of that, and you, you're kind of, um, most Ozu films, but, you know, that was one of the first ones I saw where I really, you know, kind of got this, um, just the very, very subtle stuff and the restrained emotions, but, you know, not, not too restrained. Um, and it just is so much more powerful than, than, you know, the main character in this. And constantly crying. Um, and, you know, I just I just didn't care for, you know, that character. But, yes, I think there is there is some things to praise here. Um, for not for me, uh, a masterpiece and um, not a great film. As I say, you know, there's been... 13 Ozus that are great for me, that have been on my favourite films of all time, 500, um, eight of them are masterpieces, now that is a high number, from one director, um, you know, and um, four of them are my top 100 films, but yes, um, you know, I, I, I think this is a good film, it's quite close to being average, um, but it's just slightly above that, you know, Haruko um, Sugimura, um, very good in the film, she adds a lot of the energy and a kind of, uh, you know, kind of um, drive to the film, um, Overall, this is a narrative um, that on paper, you know, I think, uh, you know, you look on what it kind of says the film's about, it, it's, it's a bit underwhelming to actually see it play out, you know, for me. Um, a lot of the stuff was just not executed well for me, um, like the, the use of music, um, the main character, Fakiko, um, and yes, basically a lot of the, the scenes with the car playing and all this kind of stuff, you know, just going in, into different locations and, and nothing really... Um, at times, you know, not not too that in, not not too interesting, um, and just I think a bit flat. Um, but it does have some, you know, really human moments um, at times. You know, and this is uh, over two hours, um, and um, it does have somewhat of, because of that, it does have somewhat of a slightly epic feel, um, which I love. Um, you know, I do prefer longer films, but this one, you know, considering um, I was very disappointed with this. It's the only Ozu that I've actually been disappointed with, really. You could say it's floating weeds, but I think that's mainly because, you know, that's been called one of the top ten films of all time and all this kind of stuff. But still, you know, I think um, I did love that film. This one, um, I liked it. Um, I think I'd have to give it a 70%. Um, but really, this is, you know, for me personally, and my opinion counts for nothing in the grand scheme of things. It really, um, it's, 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 not, it's not really Ozu standards. It's not the warmth, the kind of, the charm that Ozu films have, you know, in this film really, you know, it doesn't really feel like an Ozu, it feels more like a Mizuguchi, you know, um, kind of feels like an art film more. And, you know, I just think um, some of the darkness of the film you know, is really, really forced for me. Um, and other times, you know, you've got kind of weird things happening where, where you know, like the music playing um, at the wrong times that doesn't, you know, make it as impactful. And overall, you know, I think definitely have some very good moments. Um, I did. I did like it, um, I got invested certainly in moments, um, but I didn't, you know, I didn't care for it massively, and, um, you know, I could quite happily, um, it's safe to say this is probably going to be one of my very least favourite Ozus, um, and that's fine, you know, I, I didn't expect um, for it to be one of my very favourites, um, because of, you know, what people have described it as, but um, I did expect a bit more, personally, um, I was very disappointed overall with the film, um, but 70%, you know, it's a positive score for me. 
Um, that's to take away from it. And um, definitely the cinematography um, and Tissue Rye as well. Um, actually, at times you could say it was great performance in this, but you know his character again is just not as, not as good as um, really any other Ozu films um, that he's in. So yeah, um, that's my thoughts on Tokyo Twilight. Um, definitely recommend it. Um, but yeah, you know, by compared to the rest of Ozu films that I've seen, it's definitely the worst for me. Um, you know, I think it has a lot of flaws. Um, overall, I didn't really, you know, get that too invested in it. Um, and just um, a couple of moments. It's it just overall, it's not as warm, um, magical, you know, and definitely not as affecting and as spiritual for me as really any of the other Rosie films. Um, but some very, very good stuff in there. Um, overall, it's a solid film. I think uh, has has quite a lot of flaws for me. And um, but there we go. You know. I love, you know, all the other roses really. Um, you know, this is probably just an exception. Um, and yeah, I look forward to watching um, the other two for sure. Well, all the Ozu films, of course. Women of Tokyo, um, and of course, Early Spring. Um, really, really look forward to that. You know, some of the other roses that um, I'm holding out could, could be really, really great. Oh, uh, an autumn afternoon, um, you know, and the end of summer, actually. That looked one really intrigued me. But yes, this one, um, not for me a great film. Um, of course, I understand. Um, but for me, I just didn't connect to it as much. Um, it didn't really feel like an Ozu to me um, personally, and um, that's definitely a, 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 a not a great film for me. Um, but yes, um, thanks for watching my review of Tokyo Twilight.